Okay, I'm a really big believer in feeling confident in whatever it is that you are doing. You've got the confidence, you're good. However, that can be easier said than done sometimes, right? And that's why author and leadership consultant Christina Curtis is here today to chat with us. Christina, it's so good to see you. Thank you for having me. Oh, I love you. your outfit Thanks. too. Well, I, I have you're to point that out. <laughs> you look fabulous. <laughs> okay, well, confidence yeah. is a big thing. And I yeah. say that because I'm a mother of two girls. Yes. And I'm always like, you girls need to believe in yourself. You I need know. to just walk out with confidence and everything else will fall into place. In your perspective, why is confidence so big? It's actually more important than even just competence because if you think mm -hmm. about it, when you feel confident, you put yourself out there in yes. relationships and at work and at school. And when you're lacking in confidence, you tend to retreat. You don't actually put yourself out there and it's much harder to be successful if you're staying at home versus out in the field doing something, putting yourself yeah. on the court rather than in the stands. And so confidence has been shown to be a much stronger predictor of success long-term than just being really smart. That's so true that you yeah. say that. Now, in my case, I feel like confidence for me came with experience. Yeah. The good, the bad, the ugly, it all somehow formed me into being a more confident person and just being very open about who I am and owning it. Yes. But this is more of a trait, mm -hmm. correct? Confidence. It's uh, how do skill. you gain? Uh, okay, I got skill. it wrong. It's yes, a skill. you build it. So this is what so people okay. always forget. They're like, gosh, I think I'm born with confidence or I'm not. And then we see these people who rise up in their fields and they think, oh, they're confident all the time. But as someone who works with Fortune 100 CEOs or Olympic athletes, I'll tell you, they feel self-doubt just like the rest of us. It's just how they engage with it is actually different. But it is yeah. something that we build. We choose it. Every day we wake up in our moments, throughout the day and say, gosh, here's self-doubt. What am I going to choose? Am I going to listen to that voice? Or am I going to start leaning into that sense of self that I know I can get through this because I've done it before? Exactly. Well, first of all, I'm so glad that you said it's a skill. Yes. Uh, because this is something <laughs> that you could work on yeah. potentially and, and make it maybe something that you do every single day and start incorporating a little bit more into life. But how do we gain more confidence yeah. though? What's a good way to start working on it? Yeah, there's a lot of different strategies I will tell you focus is the number one thing so am hmm. I focusing on all the things that could go wrong or am I focusing on how this could actually be a successful engagement so yeah. really interestingly there was a study where they looked at people writing IQ tests and when okay. they thought about a successful moment in their life before they wrote the test they boosted their IQ scores which is really cool Whoa. right yes. just think about that yes. so are you focusing when self-doubt shows up which it will anytime there's risk anytime you're outside your comfort zone expect to shake hands with your inner critic it's coming it's yes. normal right that's a human nature it doesn't go away but are you turning the volume up on that or are you saying I'm good actually I've got it and using a talk track that will move you through it and help you feel good and focusing your efforts there instead Okay, that is very good advice. Now let's let's get honest here and be real. Yeah. I think we're all very hard on ourselves. We really are. Do you think though there's any benefit yeah. to that? Well, I used to. Oh, <laughs> I used to because okay. I'm really hard on myself too, right? Yeah. We're all our worst critic. But the more research I've read, the more I've studied uh, the neuroscience around this, what I realized is every time I'm hard on myself, I'm actually putting myself in a place of self-protection. Like I'm moving back, I'm retreating, I'm worrying, okay. I'm amplifying, and then all those worries start ricocheting around in my head. And I'm like, I'm, then I'm nervous about being nervous. Then I'm nervous about being nervous. It's then overthinking like, at it's that point, right? Yeah. And it spirals you into this yeah. realm of, oh my gosh, how am I going to get through <laughs> this? So instead, I recommend actually just compassion and acceptance of where you're okay. at and not focusing on perfection, but just progress. How am I getting better at this thing this day rather than worrying about the bigger picture and always feeling behind or like you're not making it? Yeah, I, one of, one of my, the things that I live by is go with your gut yeah. always. Once you start yeah. thinking and thinking and self-doubting, then you go into a million directions and you don't even know where you started. Well, you uh, do, And I do yeah. that sometimes too, even at my age nowadays, but very, very interesting. And I, I agree with you, confidence is everything. Christina, thank you so much for being with us this morning. And uh, to me, you are the epitome of confidence, okay? <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> thank you again thank for you. being with us today. Always great advice. And this is also a great author you can connect with. Get more tips and advice from Christina in her book, Choosing Greatness. So you can find it on Amazon and at Barnes & Noble. You can also learn more by going to her website, curtisleadership.com.